Welcome and thank you for joining us for another episode of the JN Irrigation Training Series. I'm Richard Rastusha, your host and Vice President of Water Management Solutions for Jane Irrigation. And today we're going to be talking about uh, irrigating strawberries. And uh, the reason why uh, we're spending our time on this is uh, one, uh, strawberries are a pretty important crop to the state of California, that's for sure. Uh, number two, uh, the way and how you manage your water and irrigation for strawberries can make a big difference in uh, how much water you're using and uh, with uh, drought. Uh, being such a, uh, and water conservation being such a big subject these days, we want to look at the best ways to manage our water uh, most efficiently. And then, uh, and then finally, uh, the other reason we're talking about this is, well, there's just different ways to manage water and nutrients with strawberries to uh, change their taste, their flavor. And uh, I know a lot of that is proprietary information, but it's always fun to think about that and think about the way you water and the nutrients you provide during your water might um, impact the outcome of your product. So, uh, so those are the things we have in store for you this afternoon. Now, helping us uh, learn all this is uh, Frank Tovas. Uh, and as you have seen Frank on these uh, episodes before, he really does well with, uh, with growers in uh, Central California. Uh, Frank's one of these guys that uh, gives me hope about water conservation and, uh, and the future of agriculture. Uh, because he is so committed to uh, water conservation and uh, making sure uh, growers are doing what's right and best for them at the same time. You know, Frank um, uh, has worked in this industry for a long time now. He's a real leader when it comes from ag and ag tech. Uh, he, uh, he went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo and uh, has uh, great ties and uh, reaches in there. And, uh, and he's joining us today. Um, and Frank, I want to say I read your blog post this morning about, uh, and, and this isn't what we're talking about or supposed to be talking about today, but you're talking about uh, treating and reusing wastewater, especially in indoor grows. Um, for those of you who are watching, not now, but as soon as we're done, I want you to go to the IDC website and read this log. It's really fascinating. I think this whole idea of reusing water or capturing water that we're using uh, uh, for some high water using crops is, uh, is really important. So Frank, welcome and, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Richard. Yeah, it's always a good time to be on. Yeah, well, a lot going on, right? And uh, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to touch on that, though. Uh, what what motivated you to write about uh, irrigation, uh, wastewater, and treatment? Just the water pressure that we're we're facing, you know, worldwide, and specifically here in California, with uh, what we're seeing in the Central Valley and, and the Northern Valley, with the, the zero water allocations. I mean, growers that are getting zero water means they, they, they can't irrigate, right? So us on the coast, we, we have the luxury of having uh, well water and um, that, that luxury is gonna be coming to an end you know, before we know it. So uh, we have been pushing growers and helping growers use drain water and reuse water where they can and, and save water where we know it's being wasted. So that's, you know, it's something that we're working in on uh, every day on projects that we're working on. So I felt it was a good fit to, to write about and, and start start that conversation with growers that maybe aren't doing it. Yeah, I can't imagine what it must feel like to be a grower. And and I always think about when they would get a 5% allocation or a 7. And I would look at that number and I'd say that is a 5% allocation, not a 5% reduction, but just yeah. the 5%, which is pretty close to zero, right? I mean, I don't know how much you can do with just 5%. And then to get a zero, uh, I can't imagine how devastating that. Uh, yeah, that exactly. Be. So, um, are the strawberry crops in California are they suffering due to the water situation? Um, it, it's hard to say, right? I mean, we we do see a a lot of growers looking at alternative methods of growing with substrate, uh, greenhouse, tabletop type growing. So we, we know that water is a pressure that they're they're facing, and, and I say it, it starts with. Uh, managing the water that they're using. So, um, you know, allocations in, on the coast, you know, like I said, most, most guys have well water. Um, so what we're seeing and hearing is that that well water is going to be restricted as well. So mm -hmm. no longer do you have uh, the freedom to, to irrigate how you want, right, with the, the well water that you have. So it's going to, they're going to dictate what you can use. And I know in the Oxnard area and the, the more areas that are facing urban intrusion, they're already they already have those issues right so uh, yeah so the restrictions are are tough 
right? And getting tougher is what uh, what you're expect expecting. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Frank, help us out here. How big of a crop is uh, strawberries to California? Well, in California this year, they're going to plant about 36,000 total acres uh, between the summer and fall crops. And uh, that, that number varies from year to year, depending on uh, you know, how many growers, how successful the previous years were. Uh, but it, uh, strawberries are consistently one of the top five commodities in California. So, um, so wow, I mean, that's pretty big. Um, and I am, imagine that makes up a pretty good percentage of uh, straw, uh, strawberries nationwide. Yeah, definitely. Over 90% of the straw, fresh strawberries come from California that are supplied to the United States. Wow, so anything that's happening for uh, water and uh, water restrictions don't just uh, impact California, but really the re rest of the country as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, as I drive by the strawberry fields, I see various different uh, irrigation methods being used. Um, in your opinion, uh, what, what, what's the best method? What should, uh, should growers be doing right now as far as irrigation? Well, traditionally, you know, crops are, the strawberry crops are established with overhead aluminum sprinkler pipes, uh, like you would see for uh, row crop vegetables or land prep uses. Um, this is not the primary form of uh, irrigation. They're using it for, like I said, plant establishment to, to drive salts down uh, to, to get that flushing of the soil. Um, and I would say drip, which is the, the main source of irrigation for strawberries, is the correct way to do that. So drip tape, uh, multiple lines on a bed, strawberry bed. Yeah, so, um, right, so they're, they're, uh, they're doing these raised beds, right, is, is basically what it looks like, right? A, yep. a raised bed, and they're putting two or three lines. And uh, I think I've seen that the size of those beds or the spacing between them has changed from uh, from area to area. Is that right? Am I, I seeing that correctly? Yeah, up here in the Watsonville Salinas uh, area, you'll see center to center bed spacing from 48 to 52 inches. And then as you, you head south, Santa Maria is uh, typically 64 inches with Oxnard being 68 inches. So, you know, a lot of that having to do with cultural practices um, you know, tractor sizes that are available and implements and equipment that, that, that's been established, uh, from before our time. Right. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I wonder who I, it's interesting because those areas aren't that far geographically from each other. It's not like, uh, States away. It's a hundred miles or a few hundred miles. And to see that difference is, uh, really kind of interesting to me. So, yeah, and you have growers that grow in all those regions, and they 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 practice all those different methods, right? So, um, it's really a, an area specific uh, growing practice, really, and it has to do with plant densities. And um, if you talk to somebody from Oxnard and someone from Watsonville, they they'll both say they have better yields, right? <laughs> right. Well, that's yeah, that's the way it should be, right? I'd be disappointed if it wasn't. So, um, so they're putting the, the, the drip tape uh, in the beds when they're uh, constructing the beds, right? And they're, yeah. yeah. So they'll have a, a bed shaper that will uh, lay the tape and in most cases also lay the plastic mulch that goes on top uh, all at the same time. Yeah. And then, uh, but they're also using sometimes uh, some other overhead spray. Yeah, definitely. That, that's that uh, overhead typically aluminum sprinkler pipe laterals uh, with a impact sprinkler, right, to, to establish that plant. And especially down in the Oxnard and some of the Santa Maria areas where you have those Santa Ana winds. So the, those initial irrigations are critical to be done with the sprinkler. So I, yeah, so I think, right, where you, so they transplant star, strawberries, is that right? Yeah. So then uh, I'm gonna get my transplant started and going is this uh, that overhead irrigation? Is that typically a uh, uh, a weeks or days that you're using this? What uh... it can range from as little as three or four weeks to as long as seven to ten weeks, um, just depending on the area that you're in. And some growers up here in the north, the Watsonville area, have, have moved to drip only. So um, it, it really varies by by the area as well. Yeah. So, all right, so there's no hard, fast science of when I can stop my overhead irrigation and go full-time on drip. 
No, and you know, a lot of guys, a lot of growers are using, they, they used overhead without really knowing why they were using it. And uh, there's a lot of studies out there that have shown that it's because of salt leaching is one of the main reasons on top of the plant establishment. So um, those initial irrigations help uh, wash the salts and the buildup in the soil uh, past the root zone of the strawberries to help them uh, establish. Yeah. Pretty interesting stuff when you think about it. It's uh, all quite uh, complicated. Uh, I want to remind everybody that we have both the Q and A and chat open today. If you've got some questions for Frank, I see one one has already come come in, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But um, uh, before we do, I wanted to ask Frank uh, about flow rates. Uh, is there a flow rate, in your opinion, that seems to work better, or your experience that works better than others? Yeah. So when it when it comes to to drip tape and flows on strawberries, you, you'll hear the growers talk about low, medium, and high flow. And, and they're referring to the, typically the Q100, which is the flow rate uh, in gallons per minute per 100 feet of the drip tape that they're using. Now, that lingo is confusing, especially for the, the irrigation dealers and manufacturers because a, a low flow drip tape in strawberries is totally different than that in row crop lettuce. So uh, what we like to, to try to train our growers and our, our salespeople is that a low flow is a specific flow rate. And in this case, it's a 0.34 or 0.4 GPM per 100 feet of drip tape. So, okay. So, uh, so, so that matters, right? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and that... it's all, you know, the, the soil type will dictate what some growers use, uh, cultural practices, you know, what, what they've done forever, what my neighbors are doing. So, you know, uh, a lot of those things dictate what's done. And, and, and these days, a lot more growers are actually turning to us for the actual designs and um, to, to better use the water that they have. So uh, where we're seeing that change as well. Yeah. Well, that's neat. So you've got some growers that have been growing for a while that are, that are coming to you and saying, gee, is there a better way I can do this? Yeah, they come to us and say, hey, am I using the right drip tape? Uh, do I have the correct number of lines per bed? Um, what are the, the benefits from two to three lines, say, on a 64 inch bed? And we're actually looking at this and helping them determine flow rates, set sizes, um, coordinate that with their planting and picking schedule. So we're doing a lot more than just uh, selling drip tape. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to see, right? Uh, as technology is getting better, everybody's trying to improve their management practices, uh, especially when it comes to water. So. Uh, we, we've got a question here, Frank, um, and I don't mean to put you on the spot with this one, but somebody is asking about the mini revolvers from Jane. Um, are people using those uh, instead of the impact sprinklers and, and why would they? Definitely, yeah. I would say very heavily in the Oxnard area and Santa Maria area and, and some up here in the north. Um, they, they even have big, become a direct replacement for the aluminum sprinkler pipe in a lot of the areas. Um, Initially, you know, way back, we did some trials on some other competitive brands of a micro sprinkler, which was more of a spray type uh, sprinkler that you would see in a, uh, a permanent tree crop application. And what we found was there was a, a huge benefit uh, on the control of uh, mites, spider mites, uh, because what it did was uh, it, it created a climate that uh, promoted the predatory mites that were being used to combat those spider mites. So along with that, we found that we could replace the aluminum sprinkler pipe with a much more efficient uh, micro sprinkler in this case with the Jane mini revolver and still achieve the, the, the leaching effect and the establishment effect of a sprinkler. Oh, wow, that's interesting, right? Because I think a lot of people would think that um, in particular, the leaching issue, right? Oh, I need to have that big impact. I need to move a lot of water, but uh, that, that wasn't necessarily the case. No, and we were able to, you know, reduce the amount of water that was applied because um, you got to keep in mind, you have a, a braised bed with plastic mulch with holes in it, right, where the strawberry plants are at. And that, that water that's being applied through that overhead impact sprinkler may not always reach the soil and you have a lot of visual runoff. So if we're able to apply a lower amount of water, in this case, uh, more than half the amount of water being applied, um, you get more of the water to the actual soil rather than running off the mulch plastic. 
Yeah. And so I think when I look at the big impacts too, um, you know, as far as looking like it's raining, it, it does sometimes look that way. There's a lot of water going everywhere. Yeah. Um, I imagine the, uh, what's actually um, uh, evaporating is, is probably pretty high. Uh, and I'm going to guess the, um, uh, the distribution uniformity then for the mini revolver is higher than the impacts. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Larry Davis at Jane has actually done a lot of work on this and we've, we've, we've been able to get upwards past 85% uh, distribution uniformity. So it, it, is, it is approved by the NRCS um, for funding. So um, with an aluminum impact sprinkler system, you know, you're looking at maybe mid seventies on a new system. And most of the strawberry guys are using rental pipe that may not be the best right, depending on where you're getting it. And we've seen some uniformities below 40%. So yeah. definitely an improvement when using a mini revolver. So, uh, well, that, that's good to hear. Uh, the other thing I'm wondering about is uh, uh, mostly those um, uh, the, the solid sets are being moved from place to place, right? Uh, exactly. Field to field, right? You put it in, you move it, uh, a lot of labor for that. With the mini revolvers, and they set them up and you, do you just leave them? You can, yeah. So what we're seeing is growers are not only installing these systems for the, the early on three to 10 week, you know, sprinkler applications, but keeping them in the field throughout the majority of the season to, to help with those uh, mite control and, uh, you know, other benefits that they provide. Yeah, very cool. So the other thing uh, I know we've got some uh, uh, viewers asking right now and what they want to know about is uh, can you really change the way a strawberry tastes based on the way you irrigate it and supply nutrients to it? Yes, you can. Um, you know, and, and every grower, every label has their, their proprietary way that, they, that, that it's done. Uh, but you will notice, I know we were talking earlier about uh, a farm stand strawberry, say in the Santa Maria Valley or down in Ocean, uh, you know, Oceanside, Orange County area. Uh, you can visit, you can taste the, the difference between that strawberry and one that you purchase at the store, right? It's much sweeter, um, uh, just has a better taste versus some of the strawberries that uh, are, are irrigated and they have a nutrient regimen to, to, so they can travel, right? So they can make it somewhere and be on the shelf for two weeks. So there is a, a definite science behind how they're irrigated and the, their fertilizer program. And it's interesting to see it's not just, uh, you know, put some drip tape out and some NPK and call it good, right? Yeah, it's pretty fascinating. I've got my local roadside guy that, uh, I don't know, I think I spend five bucks a pint. You know, it's it's expensive, yeah. but it's worth it. And I have to drive a ways to get it, but, they, but they'll spoil you. But I think you're right. I, uh, they don't last as long as I thought. And I imagine much of the, or some of the strawberries you're growing in the, um, in, in, in the central coast area there is making its way all the way to New York. I can't imagine how many days uh, plus the shelf life in the store. Uh, and that's a whole, that's a whole different science, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, from the breeding all the way to the growing, it's uh, these plants and these, these crops are designed to, to go to specific areas. And um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot behind it other than, and you know, we're just one of those small inputs. Right? Yeah. And so Frank, we've got one more question coming in and this has to do with um, uh, strategies around, uh, I'm sorry, I've lost the question here. I'm sorry. It has to do with uh, 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 salinity again and uh, how big of an issue is that? Uh, I know we talked about the impacts or, or uh, the mini revolver taking care of this. Uh, how long are people are, are people putting an application in once a week, once a month? What how does that work, and how do how do they track that? Interesting that you say is uh, you know the Cal Poly ITRC did some studies on uh, trying to eliminate uh, sprinklers altogether and use drip tape for establishment. And one of the things they found was that say on a three line drip system, so three lines on on the raised bed. Uh, if the irrigation isn't managed correctly, you can actually push the salts to the center and up, um, causing a lot of die out in the center row of plants. So uh, the salts, they, they definitely need to be managed. And you know what we help the growers do is determine what amount of water the plants need 
um, and help them with pulse irrigation. That we really see that as a benefit. And if they have solid set mini revolvers, uh, those can be ran as well. Um, you know, every every few weeks to, to help with that. Yes, on that raised bed with the um, uh, strawberry plant. So you're saying three lines of tape. Mm -hmm. Are you also looking at three rows or four rows of strawberries? Uh, they would have four rows in that instance. Um, and what we found was that those center rows, there was a lot more die out because of the salt buildup from the yeah. nutrients. Yeah, and strawberries are actually a, a pretty shallow rooted plant. Is that right? Definitely, yeah, they are. So um, does that make it harder or easier to water because of that? Uh, it's hard to say, right? I mean, I would say it makes it slightly more difficult because uh, you have a smaller area to manage, um, but the soil is pretty forgiving. So, uh, but I would say a little bit harder. Yeah, I would think so too, because, uh, you know, getting it just right is a lot harder. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I could, I can see how, you know, it would be easy, easier to overwater and uh, easier to underwater. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Both of which you don't want, you know, with a, with a shallow root. And um, in, in general, do you consider strawberries to be kind of a thirsty crop or middle of the road or? For a traditional fall planted, you know, berry crop, they use about two acre feet of water. Through the through the site the season, so um, relatively average, I would say. Um, that when you're talking about drip, um, a lot of guys will, will think that the drip is actually less water being applied at once. But when you're when you have say three or four lines of uh, of drip tape, you can actually have a higher flow rate per acre than you would on say sprinkler pipe. Right. Believe it or not. Yeah. Interesting. So. Well, Frank, um, this has been you know, this has been really interesting. We've learned a lot about how to irrigate strawberries uh, as as typical, right? As usual, we always find out that uh, uh, things vary based on where you are, uh, what kind of soils you have, what strawberries you're growing, and uh, uh, but we love getting your experience, uh, especially in this area uh, where you're you know working in it so uh, so actively. Uh, it's been uh, it's been really helpful and, and really interesting. So uh, thank you for coming on today. Yeah, definitely. Um, so for our viewers, I want to thank you for joining us today and uh, remind everybody that we've got uh, all our trainings at the janesusa.com uh, forward slash trainings on our website. Uh, you can also uh, listen to us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. We're on uh, Google, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, as well as uh, a host of others. Uh, so we hope, hope you'll check in with us there too while you're uh, driving uh, job to job. Uh, and then Friday, we're going to be back. We've got uh, Daniel Martinez uh, with uh, ET Water, and he's going to be talking about uh, a new feature with ET Water called time restrictions. You know, we've got uh, day restrictions, uh, block days, you know, when you don't want to water uh, for one reason or another. We have water windows, the time in which you want to water. And now we have something in addition to this called time restrictions to really uh, dial in accurately when you want uh, and, and time of day uh, you want uh, your water to run. So uh, that'll be a training on Friday. Hope you come back and join us again. Uh, thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time today. And uh, Frank, again, thanks so much. Uh, always appreciate your inputs. Anytime, Richard. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Bye now.